Is it real? Is it fake? Will it ever happen? Today on Firing Order, we're going to take an extra deep dive into the would-be hypercar, the Devel 16. Let's get after it. Welcome back to Firing Order. Before we get started today, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon for instant notifications when we go live with new episodes such as this. Now let's just jump right into the history of the Devel 16. The original version of the Devel 16 debuted at the Dubai Motor Show in 2013. It was built by defining extreme vehicles car industry. No, I'm not at all making that name up. The company and the car are the creation of three brothers, Majid, Rashid, and Muhammad Alatar, who are heavily invested in Dubai real estate through Alatar properties. Guinness World Record. That's pretty cool. How does that make you feel? Oh, I'm very happy. Yeah. When they debuted their would-be hypercar, they said that they wanted to have a fighter jet aesthetic to it. Lots of straight lines apparently, and two afterburners, which I assume is where the exhaust comes out at, are at the rear of the vehicle. A few years after the Dubai Motor Show debut, they came out with a very different looking Devel 16, and it's the car we know today that you can see in a Drake music video, and it is popping up all over various influencers' Instagram accounts. Some of the biggest promises of the vehicle was that it was gonna come with a 16-cylinder quad-turbo engine based off of an LS design that puts out 5,000 horsepower and has a top speed of 350 miles an hour. Now, these are really hard numbers to put into a streetcar. Some would say impossible, and we're gonna get into that a little bit more deeply, but let's talk about the engine first and foremost. The engine does exist. It is real, and it does put out 5,000 horsepower, and it was built by Steve Morris Engines. Steve Morris Engines does have a video on their YouTube channel proving this. I reached out to Steve Morris Engines and to Steve Morris himself, and he stated that the engine was built it didn't make those dyno runs, but he referred to it in all capitals in our email as a prototype and has been given to the owners many years ago and he really doesn't know what's happened to it since. How are you gonna get the power to the wheels? How are you gonna cool the engine? Your aerodynamics, right down to your wheels and tires. How is a car going to handle that kind of power and be a road-worthy machine? Through my research, I have not found a transmission that is being designed for the vehicle or currently exists to handle that kind of power for both the street and the track. Now, some people might argue, what about drag racing? They put out as much as 10,000 horsepower and the cars go down the track just fine. However, your top fuel dragsters and funny cars don't use transmissions. They use a multi-plate clutch system that has to be ripped out and replaced in between each run. Also, the engines have to be rebuilt in between each race. So that kind of constant maintenance requires an entire and highly specialized pit crew, and I don't see how you would push the Devel 16 to those limits without a crew on hand all the time. Another serious issue with a 5,000 horsepower engine is cooling. How are you gonna keep that engine from overheating once it's placed inside the vehicle? To give you an example, the Bugatti Chiron has a W16 quad turbo engine pushing out 1500 horsepower and it has 10 radiators. With the Devel 16 people, we have no idea how this engine's gonna be cooled. Right here, if you see in this video shot by RevMatch TV, they got to get up close and personal with the latest mock-up that does drive. And if you see all these vents where cooling should be located at, they're covered up. They're not functional. They're simply there for show. How have they tested cooling the engine? As far as right now goes, nobody has any idea. We've talked about cooling, but let's talk about aerodynamics. To the best of my knowledge, I could not find anywhere where this car had been aero tested. On the website, they have an animation of the wing deploying, but in any videos we've seen of the car in motion, the wing doesn't deploy at all. There's a cutout for it, there's a space you can clearly see it that it's molded into the body, but we've never seen it actively deployed to produce downforce to keep the car on the road. Another issue I wanna talk about is the suspension of the vehicle, but namely its wheels and tires, specifically the tires. They're boasting a top speed of 350 miles an hour or a, a hypothetical 350 miles an hour, but let's say they can get up to that speed. What kind of tires are they gonna be running on the vehicle? Who's manufacturing these tires? This takes me back again to auto racing. Whether it's Formula One, top fuel dragsters, whatever the application might be, those tires are specifically 
designed for that purpose. They're not for the street. They can be very dangerous on the street. This is a Top Fuel Funny Car tire. And this tire actually came off the Make-A-Wish car that exploded at the Gator Nationals. Now, as you can see, it's got the smooth surface. We call that a slick, in case you weren't aware. And it works in conjunction with a compound on the track that is very, very sticky. When they do their burnout to warm up the tires, the tires actually come in quite a great deal and elevate in height. Then once the burnout is over, they back up, get into position, and when they launch, something completely different happens. The sidewall actually crinkles and the tires squat down to get you the maximum contact patch for that launch. So it's because of components like this with their very specific applications is why you cannot replicate it on the street and the track at certain speeds and horsepower numbers. And that brings me to the actual Devel 16 car itself, the mock-up they've created. And I refer to it as a mock-up because clearly it's not powered by a quad-turbo 16-cylinder engine. And they haven't said exactly what the car was sourced from, but I'm gonna take just a shot in the dark here and say it was sourced from a C5 or C6 Corvette. If you're familiar with those two generation of Corvettes, they have an engine in the front and a transaxle in the rear. What I think the people at Devel 16 have done is taken a Corvette, stripped it down, chopped it up, and moved the engine to the back, shortening that distance between the LS-based engine and the transaxle. And every time you hear this car fire up, whether it's at that one car show or a Supercar Blondie video, it sounds to me, quite frankly, like a straight piped LS motor. <laughs> Don't bullshit me. There's also another interesting tip off that this is a mock-up based on another car entirely. And I'm gonna draw a connection to a mock-up you're probably very familiar with. And that's the Bumblebee concept Camaro that was in the 2007 Transformers film. Now that is based off the concept dimensions because at that time there was no production vehicle available. What they did was they built two of them and they were based on two Pontiac GTOs that had been stripped down, chopped up and brought in a little bit to fit those concept dimensions. Now, if you look at the wheels and tires of the Bumblebee Camaro and the Devel 16, you'll notice something very similar. They have faux rotors behind the rims, hiding the suspension, because more than likely, if you were to remove that, you'd see another car's suspension and braking system. Now, if I remember my facts correctly, I believe each Bumblebee Camaro cost $500,000 to make because you're essentially almost making a car from scratch. So the Alatar brothers certainly have money to throw around, but the car really does not hold up well on video. Look at this clip from Supercar Blondie. Now she's been in enough supercars to know quality. Look how she operates the door and what happens. This is a big moment. Let's go in. Did you catch that? Let's go in. The car is so poorly made that the doors don't even open up all the way. Now, what I find surprising is I think she's been paid to promote the car, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but you think they'd have the good sense to cut that out of the video. If I was being paid, and I'm not a shill, I would have definitely have cut that out to make the car look better than it is. When you look inside the interior of the Devel 16, it's bad. Like, it's real bad. The materials aren't properly applied, they're poorly made, cheaply put together and fabricated. And what's interesting is if you look at the gauge display that's inside the vehicle, this is a digital racing gauge that you can pick up for about $1,000. Also, look right here. Doesn't it seem like one of their cameras is not functioning? You see fabric material that is poorly placed, exposed wires, plasticky parts that don't look well, and it's just not something, quite frankly, you should put on camera. Probably like you, you're wondering about the basic functionality of the interior, like adjustable seats, seat belts, airbags, things of that nature. And look at all the extra room that Supercar Blondie has in the vehicle. Now I did a little searching and she's five foot, six inches tall. While clearly no Andre the Giant, 
She's definitely not Debbie Lee Carrington either. If you need any help with this one, give me a holler. Yet she has such an excessive amount of space inside the vehicle, and not once does she take the time to adjust her seat. I want to talk about some of the marketing around the vehicle and how it seems pretty phony and fake, as fake as the car itself, and specifically when it comes to Supercar Blondie and Movlogs. Now, when I watch their videos, I think they're getting paid for it and not disclosing that to their audience. A personal line of integrity that I have is that if I ever have a sponsor, you know about it. If I get paid to drive a vehicle, you're going to know about it. And they sing the praises of a vehicle that, quite frankly, ain't that good. When you watch Supercar Blondie's video, she's going very slow. She's not putting the car through its paces. We've talked about the very noticeable poor build quality of the vehicle, but no one seems to notice it while they're filming it or while they're editing it. And that leads me to Movlogs, a duo that knows absolutely nothing about cars and it shows. That's how you start out a car video, a catchy dance number. I think it's pretty safe to say these two are paid shills for the Alatar brothers. Every aspect of the car just blows their mind. Here we go, Lana is about to sit inside the car. Oh my God, yo. Words can't even describe how excited I am. You know, you'd be snapping so much in this car. And tell me the gears are like computerized. I think they are. Yo, you know how you have manual, you go one, two, three. I think that's computerized. I'm not sure, but look at that. Hey guys, yeah, so we're just trying to figure out right now. I think it's like you press buttons to actually put it into gear. So that is really, really, really cool. Like, whoa. So like the transmission is computerized. Yes, yeah, sweetheart, most transmissions are electronically connected these days. It's not a new thing. I've met a fair amount of supercar and hypercar owners, and while they're great people, they have discerning taste. They want the best, and if they're going to listen to somebody, they're going to listen to a truly informed source. Giving it to beautiful women or social media influencers is fine, but you're never gonna reach your target audience with that plan. The bottom line is, I don't believe this car is feasible based on that pesky thing called physics. And I want to be clear, I don't root for people to fail. If you can build some excessively powerful car that's good on the street and the track, I'm all for it, 100% game. But when you're promising numbers for years and years that you still haven't delivered on, it kind of makes me think that you don't know what you're doing. You know enough just to be dangerous. So, do you think the DeVille 16 will ever happen at those high horsepower numbers? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you want to see some supercars in action, check out some of our episodes right here. Don't forget to subscribe, and we're also on Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I want to thank all of you all for watching today.